Welcome protege. In this project we'll be interfacing a 16x2 character liquid crystal display or LCD for short. To begin I'll start off by explaining why you actually need an LCD for your projects. There are three main reasons that we could come up with. The first reason is that it can be used to display raw or processed data that has been acquired from different sensors. For example, if you interface a temperature and humidity sensor, you can easily display the data on the LCD. The second reason is that you can use it to create an interactive menu. Sometimes you see this on a 3D printer where it has directional keys, so you can scroll through the menu and change different settings. The final reason is that it can be used as a debugging tool. And this is important because some IDEs, such as the Arduino IDE, does not have a simulator or emulator which allows you to step through the code line by line and look at the internal registers on the microcontroller. As a result, it's very hard to determine where bugs are in your code. So the best approach would be to print variables on the LCD or print strings to let you know that your program is able to execute a certain function or that your algorithm is correct. Now that we've established why you would want an LCD in your project, we'll next cover the operation of it and the pinout. Most LCDs on the market have an industry standard controller, meaning that the instruction set or commands are the same. This also means that the pinout is the same. This particular LCD has a parallel interface which consists of an 8-bit data bus that can be configured in either 4-bit or 8-bit mode. We'll be using the LCD in 4-bit mode, so we only need data pins D4 through D7. It also has three control signals, which are register select, read write, and enable. The register select pin is used to tell the L LCD that we want to send a command or send data to be displayed. If we look at the timing diagram, it is low to send a command and high to send data. The read write pin is used to read from or write to the LCD. We'll only be writing to the LCD so we can ground this pin. The enable pin is used to tell the LCD when to sample the data on the data bus. So going back to the timing diagram, a transition from high to low samples the data on the bus. There are pins for ground and power and we need to connect this to plus 5 volts DC to power it. There is a pin to vary the contrast which gets connected to a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer. There are usually a lot of problems with the LCD not displaying data and the likely cause for this is that the contrast is not set correctly. So all you have to do is just turn the potentiometer to see the data. The last two pins are for the anode and cathode to power its LED backlight to give us a total of 16 pins. Let's go ahead and get started on the wiring. We have another video that shows how to connect the LCD to the modulus canister and a link for that is provided in the description. If you're using a solderless breadboard then you'll want to use the circuit schematic to wire it to the Arduino Uno. In total we need six GPIO pins on the Uno, two used for control and four used for data. Once you have the circuit completed on the breadboard, place the breadboard in the bottom storage compartment of the fuel can and begin wiring the jumper wires to the Arduino Uno. Connect pin 4, which is register select, to pin 2 on the Uno. Connect pin 6, which is enabled, to pin 3 on the Uno. 
And finally, connect pins 11 through 14, which are the data bits D4 to D7, to pins 4 through 7 on the UNO respectively. Next, we have to supply power to the breadboard with the banana jack to test lead clip cables by connecting ground and plus 5 volts DC to the minus and plus pins on the breadboard respectively. In the software we're going to show you how to get your LCD set up and then we'll show you some basic commands. First off we have to include the liquidcrystal.h library so we don't have to write the driver ourselves even though we briefly covered the timing diagrams. Next we declare a couple variables where we set RS which is register select EN for enable and then the data lines D4 to D7 to their respective pins. Next we have to set up our LCD object and pass in those variables that we just declared and like we mentioned we're configuring the LCD to 4 bit mode so we only pass in RS enable and then D4 through D7. I also have a line which allows you to use 8 bit mode but you will need to declare variables D0 to D3 and you will also need four more GPIO pins on the Arduino Uno. Now one of the advantages of using an LCD is you can create your own custom characters and to do that you can do a quick Google search and search say a custom character generator and any of the first couple links will work but I'll just click on the first one you can go ahead and create your own characters now each each pixel on the LCD is 5 by 8 so 5 columns and 8 rows so if I highlight if I wanted to create a character such as this this top bar then I would I would go over here and just copy paste this code here and notice that whatever whatever block I clicked that gets set to a 1 while the other pixels get are set to 0. In our void setup function we have to initialize the LCD with lcd.begin and since we're using a 16 by 2 character we pass in those two arguments for the columns and rows respectively and if you were using a 20 by 4 character as LCD then you would use this line of code. And that's it for the configuration and then finally we can we can get into some of the commands that you can use for the LCD. The most common one is lcd.print and you can pass in string data such as hello world and you have to make sure that you have double quotations and we do a short delay because if we don't have this delay then LCD will clear the screen right away and we won't even be able to see this string so we have a three second delay and then we clear the display so if you have something written such as the hello world it will completely erase that and then it sets the cursor back to home which is the top left corner of the LCD. Next we have another LCD.print and we say fuel your creativity but since the this string is more than 16 characters long it can't display all the string data and it's not smart enough to wrap the wrap the text around. So what we have to do is uh, we go ahead and clear this then we do another LCD.print we print the string data that we can fit on one line and then we set the cursor to the next row so in the set cursor function the first argument is the column and the second argument is the row and they both start at zero so if we write if we want to write on the the second row in the first column we pass in zero for the column number and one for the row number then we can go ahead and print the creativity string then we have a delay, we clear again, and then this lcd.cursor shows the visible cursor on the LCD. It's, this isn't really necessary, but it is something that you can do. If you don't want it, you can just say lcd.nocursor. You can also do lcd.blink, which blinks the entire pixel. And if you don't want that, then you can just say lcd.noblink. Now we already mentioned that this line of code the the string data will not be able to be written on one line but what you can also do is 
use a function called scroll display left. So we print the string data and then we call that function and we'll actually move the move the data from right to left by one character. So that's why we call it three more times after that. You can also do scroll display right which is similar except that it shifts the string data to the right by one character. And the last function that we want to cover is doing your own custom characters. Now remember that we initialized all these bytes thumbs thumbs up 0 all the way to thumbs up 5. So what we have to do is we have to use a function create char pass in the byte number and then what what we called that byte which was thumbs up 0 actually you can put this in the setup function because we don't have to keep creating those in the in the loop function every time so we created our characters and then we want to set the cursor wherever we want to write that custom character so for example we set the cursor to column 2 row 1 then we write the custom character 0 which was which we set to thumbs up 0 and as another example we set the cursor to column 2 row 0 and then we write the custom character that we mapped to 1 which was thumbs up 1 and that's it for this tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe below or leave a question or comment